it's uh, great to be here this evening with you guys it's a privilege to be connecting with you all virtually through rethinking ux and uh, glad to be here and thank you for having me over uh, my over and team my would just just spell it out my ranga i'm a designer illustrator artist i live and work out of bangalore i run a design studio called liquiding design we are a compact team of eight members who believe in combining multiple skills to build meaningful experiences ranging from analog to digital uh, of all sorts uh, right from the startup to well known startups to smaller startups that we work with mm -hmm. so uh, i to to today's topic uh, i believe limitation and creativity go hand in hand um given the current uh, situation of the pandemic uh, I, you know you can see both limitation and it can also be a source of creativity when i'm what what i'm going to be walking you through and sharing with you uh, is to see the situation from a lens of creativity and what i want to call this is my observation of the new normal i've tried to pick some of the very recent projects so it's literally like the last couple of months is what i've been you know whatever the last few months what i've been working on is what you i'm going to be walking you guys through um i thought it would be an interesting take in terms of uh, putting that together and seeing a body of work uh, and in front of you guys and also to you know um talk through that idea and and get more feedback from each of you guys and about what you guys think Uh, so it's a mix of both professional and personal work uh, and through this presentation i'm hoping that we will i would be able to break down this idea behind some of these works possibly also show process and also give you a takeaway from what i learned from this project from a new normal lens standpoint which makes it a lot more uh, appealing uh, so let me just jump off and maybe start to walk you through my first project that uh, was is called the quarantine series um literally this project was something that i started off um right when the end of march i think that's when it started to hit us um and i had heard a lot of these stories from my uh, grandparents and um my mother of you know war times and how they would go into hiding under a uh, under the ground and you know hiding away from the planes but i haven't heard anything like this where we had to all be suddenly at one day all of us had to be quarantined and locked down so it was a very very different experience and i thought this is a great creative experiment for myself and want to speak, like really had me think deeper about this quarantine situation so we all started off with the idea of me reading up maybe seeing a lot of these people talk about cleaning your hands and sanitizing your hands and making sure that you know your 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 you have a certain process you go through a few cycles and all sorts of things so it was very intriguing for me to see how creatives are handling these kind of things and i thought it would be a great idea for me to start off so the idea where i started off was to really take commonly common daily objects found at home and use the use them as day as large than life objects objects that suddenly became more highly significant i can't believe how high, significant this little sanitizer bottle became and became relevant to the lockdown scenario and my attempt was to really take these common objects and uh, bring in a sense of uh, isolation and space limitation to through these objects because if it's an object you have to only put only a few things into it what are the ones that you are ready to take away and what are things that are going to put inside was the thought so uh, two days into the lockdown i thought this was a very good way to explain the scenario uh, it was a creative stay take at staying at home with family and and following simple guidelines staying at home but at the same time i wanted to spread awareness of and sensitive and sensitize people about the importance of staying at home uh the entire uh idea the way i, I didn't th think of it that way when i started to pull it together but it was more real in a surreal space uh bringing this mundane object with a dash of fantasy you would never look at a sanitizing sanitizer 
you know sanitize a bottle and see something inside it so what it will look like if i had to go that route was uh, how i took the creative direction um few weeks into the quarantine i realized i was spending a lot more time it was getting overwhelming i'm sure all of us felt that suddenly we were trying to figure out how we will work how will we break down work what is going to happen a uh, lot more uh, virtual meetings and back and forward with work uh, you know and and for me this depicted the time where i just spent a couple of minutes through between breaks between meetings where i just stood near the window sitting chai and not really worrying about what is going to be the next meeting uh, and i thought this was very pleasurable from my point of view that it was getting a little bit of overwhelmed i was i was overwhelmed with a lot of things going on at my end um running a uh, design studio on one end running clients on one end having them meet together have these discussions oh my god it is quite quite an overwhelming task and what i try to depict through these these kind of uh, characters is to really have both genders and have different age groups because i wanted to make it very, very relatable and open up the uh, the broader perspective and scenario to how we feel and that's exactly what i was thinking of uh, in terms of how this came together uh the third one which really hit home the idea was the i for for me specifically which is one of my favorites is my gratitude and salute to the superheroes in the front line fighting against all odds i thought it came together pretty well i was trying to figure out what is the best way possible for us to really convey this in a beautiful way that we we salute you for and the candle is on for that but at the same time it is this feeling of pride and uh, you know having people do their best uh, irrespect in the face of whatever was going on uh, a few months ago um this was a refreshing change it was getting too busy it was getting too um to see this uh but what you know one of the times when i was standing at the patio uh, you know the last uh, the, the few weeks uh, specifically during the lockdown was this patio and walking up on the terrace and one of the times it was the summer showers where the a bunch of kids just came out and just started jumping in joy and having fun and the first thing that hit me was uh, you know like children right like the way they wholeheartedly embrace the goodness of any situation and every situation that comes their way and i think we as as adults we start to really think about too much but you know for them it's that simple sense of inhibitions of just having a good time irrespective of what that looks like and i thought was like i felt myself doing that in, in a way that can i be that child like you know it doesn't matter what's going on can i be just open to any situation and really reaping the goodness around it Uh, and that is what i was going with this little space uh, uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, a salt shaker and people in it basically or in a patio uh this is the fourth of the series uh, which was more a reminder for myself to really step out and get not really step out but do a lot more physical activity i did a little bit of walking but not too much but i think it was getting in the way of me having to just be a little more conscious but you know again the object being uh, a typical gym water bottle and having people inside it and having fun uh, building it uh, just to step out and show you how i build some of these things just to go go through the process for a lot of designers who think how these things are made this is how i build it out again i try and bring the idea of uncertainty for me and 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 constraint uncertainty in a way that i don't know how it will turn out i'm not working for uh, a a designer or a or a team that tells me what to do this is my own design i try and figure out what works what doesn't so it is uncertain in a way that is white canvas first i need to figure out but what you see is also trying out different poses different styles different color schemes before you involve or come up with the final piece so this is literally on the left hand side my entire series of um, of uh, you know trying to keep it together at the same time how do you in bring in more ideas into how i build these uh, using color and making it look similar but not same right um, so 
gives me the, the uh, i think as designers uh, uh, and this is another one um, the good part about being a designer uh, is that you are constantly seeing uncertainty uncertainty in a way that when you start a beginner new project you have no clue how it's going to go whether it's going to be the best of the series or the best of the things that you will be able to but your hope is that you want to do something great right that's the uncertainty you start with but as you start to build not just from a designer but from a front end engineer or a product manager or anyone who's building things the start is uncertain the start is very chaotic it, it doesn't un- you don't understand how it goes but as you start to make sense of it you start to begin to see the you know, rays from the other end of the tunnel which is great because when 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 you hit upon these kind of uncertain times you can really look back at your own journey at several times and you can really foster uh, you know your confidence to make things happen irrespective of what the situation is and i have feel very strong that we are able to build these kind of things every single day or go through these kind of situations every single day as designers yeah so uh, these are certain sketches i'm going to go a little more faster maybe uh, just so that you guys uh, see the overall breadth like so what you see is it starts off with a sketch in my mind uh, pradeep asked this care question about how do i start and where i go and how i build it these are very initial thoughts that i look at and when you look at how it came together the the the, the man the little kid looking up and having fun is so it so so different from this woman uh, looking up and breathing i those are changes i make as i start to compose them as i start to see it very differently as i start to make these character changes uh, in my own mind uh, and i think it's a great thing for any creative to really start to change your your initial idea to and keep improving keep Uh, keep uh, uh, refining keep uh, changing but not change the overall idea you still stick to the main overall piece but you're refining to do better things in, inside it uh, this for me is a personal favorite this is a uh, blending work video calls mindfulness fitness experiment with new flavors and recipes i'm not a big uh, guy who cooks too much but at the during the lockdown i i had i tried to do certain things myself uh this is just me trying out certain things i thought it was a good fun um way to really try and put it inside a mixer and see how it mix all these kind of things and what comes out of it um and i like how the approach in that sense of uh, me having fun doing these kind of things when i step back this is the overall series I think the best part that taught me with this was that you know simple things everyday objects can be mundane but very marvelous when you start to combine them interestingly and more and more of this is about really looking at the mundane and trying to figure out what is the marvelous idea and marvelous thing out there whether you are a product designer or a illustrator or someone who can create you're looking for these simple things that can make sense and can you really look at marvel and the, the sense of wonder from these mundane objects um, is my take away for from this project from a new normal standpoint so let me move on to the second project um which uh, is a little more commercial um this is a project that i did with invision uh, if anyone using any of these design tools i'm sure would really be very familiar with invision um invision does great tools and uh, i had an opportunity to work during this lockdown literally during this lockdown between the periods uh, between april and may to pull out uh, a new book uh, ebook for uh, design and engineering and what could have been the best great uh, you know fitting finish of always us being designers and engineers coming together to build something very really useful and meaningful um so that was the handbook i was trying to make people who are not familiar with it uh, can look at look, look them up they called design better it's a it's a collection of best practices uh, from all sorts of great design disciplines and people from different teams all around the world who run great design teams as well as individuals um, who are experts in this field and the idea of these books are to really combine two things one is to really take the 
great knowledge coming from various teams and individuals but put it in a creative way that helps people understand complex concept in a very simple way and i think i'm i'm more than kick to really work with these kind of concepts because you are looking at trying to tell your these concepts uh, or your own like you know your own um, uh, work that you do to a 10 year old imagine um, it's always a hard for one to say what do you really do how do you really then tell these concepts to someone um, who matter to you who's a 10 year old who doesn't understand her who understands but needs a metaphoric way to tell these things these stories in a beautiful way and i feel that this is a great way for me to really challenge it to challenges me to really think of it very differently so uh, this is how it looks it has a very beautiful appeal to it um i'm just showing this this is because jack delhi who is a uh, a very uh, very popular designer who works with uh, uh, envision they have a great team of designers uh, who put these things together it's always great to collaborate with them sitting in india and figuring out how they do what they do um, and it's always great um, so what typically happens is a, a brief comes out like this literally this brief is just telling me when i want it how quickly i want it and what is the sh- the, the the artwork is all about and the key concept that we were going with for this was an intersection of creative and technical thinking uh, more to do with uh, bringing designers and developers closer together to improve collaboration reduce friction and also to really you know it faster because you could really bring them together real quickly so it it was quite a challenging one how do you really tell something where you having collaboration without really being too direct so here's what the idea i cracked typically this idea would have been given to me but this was a very different approach because they had no time to really put this idea together they said why don't you come up with the idea and i pitched this idea so this is the first time i was pitching an idea to envision and see how that works which was very beautiful um, and they really jumped up to it they said like let's try this out let's see where it goes so the idea was to really a play on the thing called string games i'm sure you all of us have played this if you haven't you should uh it's pretty straightforward you have these simple shapes with rubber bands you can make you can make these loops uh the metaphor where we were going were was was for uh constant collaboration between design and engineers the strings became more a bridge between two disciplines uh the game can also be played by multiple people two or more people passing these strings both back and forward constantly and creating these interesting models so if i take back that same idea what we are really trying to do with design is to really go back and forward with your thoughts and you're creating these ideas through strings and what i realize uh, is that when you're coding i'm sure Uh, a lot of us understand that we use these idea called strings and they have certain colors to it and they we really use that as a as a normal way to explain these are different strings in a way that is threaded together and i thought it came together really well and they pretty much like the two in terms of helping understand this concept really well so this is my first straight sketch um i thought it would be really cool for us to really capture the idea of the game in the foreground and have these models show up at the background but i they felt that it felt they felt that there were too many things happening that it felt like a game in the foreground which had no uh, it, it didn't feel very strong but at the background there was so much going on so it, there was a lot of uh, competing kind of ideas rather than just one single frame of thought uh then there there was too many things going on and can we eliminate a lot of these and get closer to the real real problem in hand the the idea about so this is a bunch of sketches i created but then i'll show you the process so you can see it it's not out there it, this is the first time anyone is seeing and it's good i want to bring certain things that are brand new which are not yet out there this is the first sketch the first chapter that says bridging the gap between design and engineering so we said why what if we can play a game where three guys are coming together and creating a bridge through these kind of strings uh in an interesting way and what came out of this was this final piece uh really bridging the gap i'll show you in terms of process has how i go through these so you see a very close 
uh, you get a close peek into how things are made and how things come together in terms of storytelling and how you could use in your own ways to really make this happen uh, whether you're building interfaces or you're building digital tools uh, it could help um so this is the home page, the the cover page if you see this is what we came up with so if you really look at it uh, this was the initial sketch we zoomed in we just zoomed in on the hands so we said let's what if we zoom in and only look at the hands telling the story and can we have something very interesting in that sense that can we uh, just eliminate whatever is not necessary around and just zoom in uh, and figure this out so again uh, as i said different colored metaphorical lines coming together building the story what i try and do is to just block out color so if you go from this i just try and block out color you see that i haven't done too much i have because i sketched out so detail i know exactly the lighting and color and even the shadow so what i try and do is to trace on top and do something like this as simple as that and the next layer is the detail so you see the step by step i build it out very simply i just take the colors block it out understand the colors and we wanted to make sure that it came from different ethnicity and multiple people pulling this together so we wanted different kind of colors if you see even the uh, the, the the skin shades uh, have a range of it to really denote that there are multiple people coming together and the overall story comes to, comes alive when you start to see these small little details uh, and like it's not a big difference but it when you really start to make these small refinements as i said makes a massive difference from going from here to here uh, but not adding too much detail but enough detail so that user can understand what's happening uh, typically for a chapter 2 i would have gone through four or five iterations just like mocking you were like how you do a wireframe right when you come up with a plot problem statement you would pick up a wireframe and you say okay let me build it out as a flow and you would try different flows this is exactly how you would do it this is uh, the second chapter where it was exploring product magic how rapid experimentation can drive decision making uh, so what they were in very happy with is that it started to look very similar to a rocket launching or a mock up and the mock up really didn't come through very clearly uh, we were trying to do what if it was like these strings that you can rotate like you had these nails and you had 1 2 3 yes children you would actually connect these dots uh, and that's where we were going with and finally what came through was this one so you know going all the way here this is the final product uh, so you you make a massive journey in in a few weeks literally 3 weeks you have to really quickly iterate prototype figure out what are things that work at the same time you're building the the, the overall mood to it uh, which makes it really interesting and eliminating things that you don't think are working because when you start to look at sketches as many you can get confused and it can also happen as wireframes when you build so many wireframes so many kind of uh, interaction models you start to get overwhelmed the idea of a designer here is to really start to eliminate and start to make sure that certain things are made sure that decisions are made in a certain way so you can move forward uh, rather than get caught in uh, the overall mix so you see that more and more um this is chapter 3 you see how many more sketches we must i would have made just hands just playing with hands and figuring out what are different ways and this is a tool we used i am super impressed uh, we used a homegrown tool i'm sure each of you must have used it already it's it's called hat free hand uh, so we this is how where we collaborate on work you see that each of us add our own um, so from top to bottom bottoms are all the sketches and the colored uh, items are people leaving notes uh, saying you know i like it i don't like it or whatever the comments can be improved on this one so every day i would put up this and people would next day i would get more feedback then go back and change that feedback to something else and uh, you know the first cut the second cut the third cut i think we had around 6 to different 8 cut to 6 to 7 different cuts before we actually got down to how it starts to look and come together uh, i like the process because it's really strong they really get into a lot of details in that sense um so yeah you see that uh, this chapter 3 which is about engineering and collaboration 
um, working together as teams, different models, working with different uh, f f scaling efforts, scaling engineering efforts and things like that. And this for me was a very different challenge. Uh, this is the last one, which is a very slightly a little soft skill. Uh, this is about shaping culture, recruitment, managing design engineering teams and building partnership and leadership, which is very hard to find because you're using hands, but how do you really try and bring that? So here on the right hand side, we have come up with this thing where we could bring all the idea and string it together into one bunch. Um, and this literally was the final one, literally two days before we shipped, I thought it would, didn't make sense because it, I didn't feel very strong. It didn't have that punch. Um, so we went back and changed it in one night, literally went from here to this one. We felt that this had that weave, it had that color, it had that kind of punch to culture, building leadership, building people. And this is what we wanted to really come you know, bring this together. So what you see is how the final output comes together. It's a great way because you can do only that bit. And there are people who take this layouts, put it together. Uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, authors who I interact sometimes who, un who uh, try and bring their ideas together. Uh, John Meader is a bunch of guys who really make this happen behind. So you, you play your part, but others play their part. And finally, when it comes together, it looks so beautiful uh, and nothing like, uh, you know, doing this kind of, uh, uh, you know, work together, uh, which where you can really complement and work through in, a, in an interesting way uh, uh, is what really keeps, uh, uh, you know, any designer uh, looking at some of these, uh, these projects and figuring out how you can do your best from here. Uh, so I wanted to actually animate it as well, see how that looks. So this is a, uh, my own take. So I don't, I mean, I, I could have easily stopped at just, uh, uh, making them as just pictures, but I thought this had a lot more punch, uh, when you actually animate it and you start to play with it and it helps me also learn a new tool. Uh, I tried to do a little bit of animation, but this is something I've been very consciously figuring out how to, um, you know, animate, put something out there and not just look at it as just only static frames. So for me, the takeaway has been from this project has been focus and refinement, focus on elements that matter. Uh, more and more are uh, both uh, from a project and from a uh, you know personal standpoint, I feel that focus has been one of those areas where we've been, uh, we've been constantly hit by several things that we need to manage. And for me, elimination and refinement. And most times we know what we want to do, but we, end up not eliminating and figuring out what needs to be done for today, what needs to be done for tomorrow, uh, for us to really build on our skill, build on our point of view and refining it. And I thought this, uh, from that angle taught me that to, for me to prioritize things, because if I had to ship it in a certain time, I had to come up with a certain discipline and also from its own characteristic, it was all about eliminating a lot of things and refining to the point I was happy about the outcome. Uh, and that was a great learning for me personally. Uh, the last one I want to quickly run through, which I wouldn't take a long time is uh, something I'm very kicked about. Uh, and I'm sure all of us will relate to this from a experience design standpoint is phone pace app that we or sorry my bad not phone pace app it's the phone pace web experience that we redesigned uh, recently again through the pandemic through the overall piece we had done some work but it was great how we all collaborated together to come together and build something like this so this was the phone pay app i'm sure all of us have used phone pay or heard about it but haven't hit the app uh, you know web experience so this is how it looked um, I come from a background of experience design myself. I've built a lot of products and this is like a common territory where we start to brainstorm. We figure out target users, address what are we trying to build, proposed interaction structure. I'm not getting into these details because we all know we do this every single day. Uh, but the idea was that we wanted to make sure that we have all this covered before we get into the creative side of things. So this hit me that what are we trying to do is pretty simply covered as a phone pay example that, you know, 
what if phone pay did simply if i took and this is before the pandemic and mind you where people were trying to still get to the new normal of using phones to pay money and what if you could take your your phone to a sweet shop and bought sweets or paid your bill just by just you know pay you know looking at your bills and paying for it or went to the grocery store right next to home and bought groceries or paid money to your friends and family just by a tap of a button and securely through phone pay this was the pitch i made we actually wanted this to be the pitch that we if we get it right and we get it right and they just bought it they said like wow this is great this is just exactly what we want to say can we say it in a beautiful way so we started to draw this is how i approach every project this is no different to phone pay we try and do every bit of the interaction idea in place so this is how we really sketch out even before so we go further before beyond the structure and try and visualize what that looks like from an end user standpoint uh, so we start to visualize this further in terms of how things come together uh this is how we pitched in terms of what phone pay st- stood for whether it's reliable convenient contemporary being available very local uh in, and phone pay had pay in it which is a hindi um you know uh, the devnagari script in it and it has it supports 15 languages so we wanted to play on the idea of this modern indian uh style to it so what we did was to just take out certain uh, examples so we we uh, when we started to look at the shapes um we said pay has a circle has a stroke the the ascending stroke of pay on top and also uh, the the pay's uh, per if you see has a soft side to it so can we play on this so we started to build out certain ideas so the circle could be used for people logos while the angular lines can be how we shoot pictures of uh, bills and things like that and pictures can be owned by us having these kind of chamfered edges so you see how we were trying to these are very in, in uh, initial examples of what we were thinking of in terms of style uh, we were we were these are 3d models we built not the left one but the middle and the right we said why why can we really have bills rendered in 3d and captured them in a certain way that you would actually see so we started to look at bills all sorts of things to really make this happen uh and we wanted to capture them in natural settings whether it were in a cafe or a just bought a certain thing you come to a pos and you want to scan or buy it online and what we wanted to use was phone pay colors so it was a very strong purple with other colors mixed into it so if you really look at the color palette again when uh, we started uh, we were trying to work this out but i think great part was co design came in and they did their part of building a beautiful identity and refining the identity and coming up with colors uh, which i thought was beautiful and it complemented the kind of work we did this was a very different take we were trying to also figure out if we could really use one or two syllables in between where we could really have uh you know uh, a local term uh, or a local uh, word in it uh, in this case where you still read as merchant at phone pay or shopping in that sense um so those were like the ideas we were thinking of now we are slowly getting into how we presented our ideas we try and show them in the way people would actually uh you know go through this so this is how we were looking at these ideas and these were like the initial design mock ups in terms of how uh you know when you present what is that interaction going to look like uh what will happen when you pause for a few seconds what if it what if you scroll what should happen i'm sure all of us are familiar doing these kind of uh, mock ups but i think with with the design and putting things together it makes you feel that you can want to jump right out there and feel like it's almost there you want to build it so this is how the mock up starting to uh, uh, came come together from a language standpoint more and more of these as we started to build out design language for phone pay uh, and the mobile and web app 
experiences of how this will translate from desktop to uh, to web. Uh, this is what we have finally come up with. Uh, it it took us a while, but it took us. Uh, it was quite a um, quite a interesting journey. Both from uh, it's a collaboration. I wouldn't say we did it all. I think it was a great collaboration with uh, uh, Navneet's team, who heads design for PhonePay, and us trying to figure out what is the best possible experience that we can put out there. Uh, and finally, I think we have a much better polished view. Uh, great work with uh, co-design doing their bit of figuring out better your know, saturation, colors, all sorts of things that they've done a great job in terms of branding. It was a great collaboration in its own trying to figure this out. For me, the takeaway from this project was to find a unique voice. Finding a unique voice for the brand, uh, also finding a unique voice for yourself. Uh, from a from a new normal standpoint, I feel that it's very important to stand out and have a have your own voice and stand out of the pack. Whether you're building it for a brand where you're trying to figure out a unique voice for them or for yourself, it's more and more going to be a lot more online stuff. And how can you really pull away from these things and look at it very differently? I wanted to leave you with some certain other things that I'm trying to explore. This is for CureFit. We are trying to work out what the, the new normal looks like. I put out every week something. So let me pause and not talk and just walk you through this for a couple of seconds. So. In conclusion, I would like to say that for me, the space of art and design have been a playground to practice an array of related skills, falling and rising and falling again and rising again, and most importantly, enjoying the entire process. Uh, I would like to conclude my presentation by this great quote that I read from Robert Greene that says, the future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in creative ways. And I feel very strongly that uh, it, that is going to be the new, new normal in the way if we really start to look at this as a great opportunity. It's about trying to figure out new skills and how, what can we bring to the table that is very creative and uh, fulfilling for each of us. Thank you.